Wing Chun is part of the Jeet Kune Do uh, evolution. I think you have to have it to understand Jeet Kune Do. Without Yip Man, there would have never been Bruce Lee. And without Bruce Lee, there would have never been a Jeet Do. So I think it's important to take the, uh, the knowledge of the past and try to improve it. Um, those guys paved the way, and without them, we would not have reached the levels that we are now. Each pioneer adds to the, to the knowledge that we have now. And I think that's why in the Asian uh, society that, that they looked up to the instructors so much. I, I trained with other Wing Chun people because I really wanted to see uh, how Wing Chun was, was taught. So I, I trained, uh, I have nine Wing Chun teachers. Uh, James Lee makes eight and Bruce Lee makes nine. Oh, he was uh, young, talented, uh, wise for his age. At the Bruce Lee at that time period, well, it might be a little bit on the uh, cocky side at, at that time period, but he was definitely uh, well-schooled and knowledge beyond his years. He had a high respect for Yip Man, but I was told because he wasn't pure Chinese that sometimes uh, he didn't want to teach Bruce Lee in front of students, so he assigned William Chung and Wang Chung Leong to teach him. And then as time went on, he, when he came to the United States, he started to evolve on his own. But uh, he had a high respect for Yip Man. There was a, definitely could see a, a love there. He knew uh, there was a certain range where Wing Chun worked uh, very effectively. And he knew there was a certain range that Wing Chun didn't work. He says, Wing Chun works real well in the, in the bathroom. <laughs> so he says, if you have a space with a football field and there might be as many as three or four or five people, then maybe another structure might work. So he had a system that worked on the outside where he can sort of hit and go. He developed a system what he calls Qi Zhao without touching. He started to put what worked for him and that became the structure of his personal Jeet Kune Do. But Wing Chun is still the core. You, you still start with that. Okay, so the structure in, in the JKD, uh, we learn to go against right versus right. We learn to go against left versus left, and right versus his left, and left versus right. So pretty much, it's, 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 it's uh, still, if he punches and I move, this is, this is block. So it's very much like the Wing Chun structure, one, two, and three. So the basic is, this is one, okay? There's another one on the inside. Another one is two hits, okay? One is split entry and move out. But you can move in any different range, and this is pre pretty much him. So usually, when he punches that hand, we hit, okay? He shifts to the other side. You can do the same uh, structure on that with the rear hand as you can the front hand. So if you can have one hand in, you can also do it for the rear hand. One hand in, one hand out. If you go in, you come out with a finger jab, but on this side, you come out with a finger jab. Most of the techniques we have to use in Chung Choi is mainly used for, for practice, but in reality, the finger jab was exclusively used. If you punch this way, and he punches with the rear hand, the shot is really here, two and three. All right? A lot of traditional stuff is like one and two, and you trap the first barrier, trap the second barrier. But he goes across the center line and two. And I'll do it slowly. That's one, that's two, three. The bridging of the, is the thing that makes the difference in the JKD. A lot of the bridging is from here, one, two. And a lot of chop toy blocks, back to the back. This is pretty much what JKD structure changed. I have a Wing Chun teacher by the name of uh, Sifu Francis Fong that has. Uh, that has worked with me, and he comes in here for regularly for the last 11 years giving us uh, Wing Chun material. And I think it's knowing when 
that material is applicable and when it's not. But definitely it should be taught. That, that should be part of the education, the, the sensitivity you see from Chizo. Uh, the trapping, I think, is very good. The short range punching definitely should be taught. But I can't really agree that it would be the only system that you can use. But it could be a system that might throw a system out that's not used to that type of uh, structure. I liked it, you know, and uh, you, when you study something, sometimes you go away from it, and then you come back to it with new eyes. But definitely, I, I think it's a real great system. A lot of times when people uh, see things like a boxer, a lot of boxers ask me, say, well, nobody fights this. Says, why, why are they doing this on a dummy? So that's a posture. It's a movement in time. It's a transitional movement. A lot of times, if I perform what we call a poxal and a lopsal, sometimes he will trap my hand down like this. Okay? That's one way. And the other way is he'll trap it together. Now, this motion here is the third motion. When you teach, he'll turn or move in. Again, slow motion. This is one, this is two, this is three, one. See this, he'll put the foot like that. And people look at it and say, how do you spar with this? Uh, keep watching my look at that. This is for close quarter and it's a movement in time. So when I trap his barrier and I come back, he'll come across and you'll see the, the knee, his foot will jam and he'll closely over here, you see over here, and back. Okay, so that's basically what the movement teaches. A lot of things in the in the dummy and they have different meanings. And if you ask different Teachers, they have different meanings. Like uh, a good example of the third one, they go one, two, and one, two, back and hit. Well, actually, all that is is this is teaching you how to parry this way. But this one feeds to left hand like this, and you're firing. So I'll do this slowly. See how this one cuts the roof back? That's that motion here. But many people think they don't understand it because it's a dummy, and a dummy is just a training method in a tube. This is a uh, set three in Wing Chun. Okay. This is set four. And this is set number five. set three, four, and five. Now what I'd like him to have him do is just do set five and JKD. Traditionally, these were not taught in order in the structure. Notice the, the, the distance he's coming in. Breaking in. This is the, the, the component parts of, of the JKD. And they're exercises, not in combat that they're gonna be in this order, but they're just some of the components needed to, to learn uh, the Jeet Kune Do. When he first came to the country was he, he could win everything by the, via the straight blast or what they call the Jik Chung Choi. As time went on, uh, he changed that uh, thought process and he started to research you know, and uh, experiment, and after that he would create. So a lot of that material, I think, was uh, was being changed on, almost on a, I'm not exaggerating what I said, on a monthly basis, he was always changing the structure, always re refining it, and uh, making it more functional. That's what he was trying to educate me, and said, you can't really follow a particular way, you have to find out what works for you. That's Jeet Kune Do. And then final notes. That's why people ask me, can you teach it? And I said, yeah, I can teach it. Can you standardize it? No, I can't standardize it. Because you can standardize by principle and concept, but it still has to fit the individual. You, you can't force a person, you know. There's certain type of uh, 
skills and uh, limitations we have with the body, so you have to fit it. In martial arts, the same way, right? What works well for one individual cannot work well for another. Our, our geometry of our body, some are bigger, some are smaller. So I'm gonna put you, this, this structure here can be right to right, which is like that. It can be taught left to left. It can be taught right to left. And it can be taught left to right. So what I'm gonna have you do is so the low jab, low, and you back this. Go out to the kicking range, we'll hold it. That's usually the first drill. This is to teach you hand range, okay, to kicking range. All right, the next one, is you go to this position. You throw the rear punch, you hook, you cross, kick. This is to teach you to go from trapping range to hand range out to kicking range. Now the next one, if you go trapping range to kicking range to hand range to kicking range. Now, when we go into the Wing Chun structure, is when once we have a, the handle answer like that, he'll come across and he'll grab, he'll back this, and he'll go one, two, three. This is now where part of the Wing Chun was used. You go down, I raise yourself, you pop up, pop up gradually, and one, two, three, and you kick. And if you chop joy, okay, come up, pops up, double pops up, come back, hit, and one, two, three, out to the kick range. That's pretty much what JKD, in concise. Because this is already hand range. He might defend like this, if he's a karate man, he might defend like this if he's a karate man. He might, boxers might, might defend like this. Only thing usually they're in a you know, left lead. We learn how to do this right lead and left lead. So if I respond with my front hand, he hits with the back fist. Notice that he traps that barrier, comes back. And now he goes out to the kicking range. Right, because he man went. Now the other range is he stays. Now this is more of a western boxing approach, going out to the kicking range. This one now, he's in trapping range, but I move out to kicking range, hand range, and then kicking range. Okay? Now this one now, because maybe I can't back up, I respond with the rear hand, and then one, two, three, and then back. The other one, he spawns here, but my hand goes up. He traps the first barrier, second barrier, and one, two, three, and then back. The other one, if you could see closely, see the trap is right here? He's trapped on the inside. I respond, respond, respond. One, two, three, and in a nutshell, that's JKD. That's Bruce Lee. He was always changing the structure, and every time he changed it, it was for the better. Without Yip Man, there would never have been Bruce Lee. Without them, we would not have reached the levels that we are now.